Good morning. I'm Lucinda Gabriel, and today we are August 30th, 2020. My our time is flying by so fast. The summer is almost over. And so this week I've prayed, uh, you know, and I've asked God, what do you want me to share with, you know, people this week and uh, what should we talk about? And I've, I'm always listening to, you know, what's going on in the world and um, and what people are posting on Facebook and stuff. And, uh, and that all speaks to me. So, you know, what I really want to share this week is about how to pray, how to pray. So, you know, there's a lot going on in the, in the world right now and people are losing hope. And, uh, and it depends on where you're living, you know, like maybe maybe it's quiet right now where you are and, um, and you're not too nervous and maybe you think that this is all over and, and stuff. But, you know, we believe in the Bible. We know that the day is going to come where things are going to get worse than what they've been for the past months. And so... I think it's very important to teach people how to pray. And God told me this two years ago, and that this is what I need to be teaching, how to pray. So I just want to share that with you. So I prepared just a little uh, text about that, about, you know, when he said this to me. And so uh, this was June 1st, I think 2018. It was a Friday night. And I just want to share this little part with you before too, because I think it's important. And uh, for all you who are out there that you know still following the new age, believing in the new age, and especially you know if I'm the one that led you to it as well, um, I want to reveal to you, if you haven't listened to my other videos about you know how this kind of came about. So on the Friday night, just before God spoke to me, and I clearly heard His voice, I stumbled across this video by Stephen Bankars and he's got this new website called Reasons for Jesus but Stephen Bankars was in the New Age and he had a New Age website back then which I don't recall because I didn't look at it back then but I stumbled upon his testimony where he shares about how we met Jesus and then right after that there was another video called Prove the New Age is Satanic and so I was just blown away by what I saw and it was so well done that I had no reason to not believe what he said. And uh, so I started to, anyway, I listened to the whole thing. And I, and I just called my sister, Michelle, at the time. And she was woken up one month after me. She was the only person in my in my life <laughs> that, that I knew that God woke up besides me. You know, in this intimate way that we know God. Uh, because many people call themselves Christians, but they really don't know Jesus. So that, there's a difference. And, uh, and if you're not sharing Jesus every day, if you're not talking about him, you're not praying to him, and you're not living for him, you don't know him. And that's the big difference. It's, it's the knowing him and having this revelation that's put into your heart that Jesus is God. And, and that's, that's the big thing. So there's a big difference. And so anyway... My sister Michelle was woken up a month after me and I called her up and I cried for three hours on the phone with her and told her like, look, look at this, look what I found. And I knew this was going to change my life forever. And uh, so two days later on the Sunday morning, I was in bed and I heard this little voice in my head at 5 a.m. And it was God speaking to me. It was Jesus speaking to me. And he says, you are not serving me. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not serving you? Everything I do is for you. He's like, when people go to you, they do not come to me. And I stopped and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. I wasn't going to him either. I was going to other people. And we were consulting each other, talking to angels and supposedly these deceased loved ones. And then I heard him say, and how can you be sure where you're getting your information from? And I'm like, mm, I guess that means it's not necessarily from you. So that's when I really had to accept that, you know, what I was doing was not from God. The, the angels or the deceased loved ones that I was talking to was not necessarily God's angels. And so, you know, and with the video that I had watched just before, I couldn't deny it. And so um, I said to him, I said, well, what do you want me to do with all these desperate people that are coming to me and calling to me? Like, what do you want me to do? And he said, pray for them, 
pray with them and teach them how to pray. So this week, that was on my mind, teach them how to pray. So I'm like, okay, well, how do we pray, Lord? How do we pray? And, you know, I've been praying and I've learned some things in the past couple of years by, you know, people that I've met. So I just want to share with you what, you know, the Lord put on my heart about that. So let's talk firstly about physical healing. I really believe in my heart that in God's perfect world, we would not need doctors. Everyone would pray for one another and everyone would be healed. And this is how Jesus did it. He simply commanded sickness to be healed. Okay, so I'm going to go through this a little bit with you and show you exactly what I mean by that. So he said, for example, in Matthew 8, 3, be clean. In John 5, 8, get up, pick up your mat and walk. In Luke 13, 12, he says, Woman, you are free from your sickness. In Luke 4, 39, he says, um, He ordered the fever to leave her. He ordered the fever to leave her. And the fever left. And she got up at once and began to wait on them. So Jesus also said that whatever we ask in his name, you know, since he's gone, we will receive if we believe. The apostles also commanded healing because all power is given to each of us as born-again believers. And after receiving the Holy Spirit, Peter commanded the lame man to walk. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankles, bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. So notice that Peter didn't say to this man, uh, he didn't pray for the man. He commanded him to be healed and walk. He also didn't ask God to heal him. He said, such as I have, I give thee. So what I have, I give thee, I give you the power. And so Jesus said in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he says, as ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at end. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. And that's another thing. You know, if you have to go and pay someone for healing, uh, it's not, probably not from God. And I, I really believe there's no reason for that. Like us as Christians, we should be going to each other and asking for healing and receiving this healing from God. And people, you know, as brothers and sisters, we should be praying for each other, commanding the pain to go, for commanding the sickness to be healed in Jesus' name. And, you know, if we go back to Matthew, he says, heal the sick. He's telling the, the apostles, the disciples, heal the sick. It's the same thing for us Christians today. That didn't disappear after the apostles died. The disciples that were, you know, he said, you know, go out there and make disciples of all nations. So the disciples made disciples. Disciples made disciples. We made disciples. We made disciples. We made disciples. And we today, we are supposed to be disciples of Jesus Christ, not members of a church. We are disciples of, of Christ. And we are commanded to heal. And we are given all authority for that. So, he didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. It was a command. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in strange tongues. You see, the problem today is that many are taught in religion that this is no longer for today. But God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So speak to God for yourself and ask Him, you know, for the truth, right? And read the New Testament for yourself. Don't believe a word I say. So, and there's many people out there for, you know, that are examples of God's healing. Just look it up on the internet. Just type it in, you know, uh, Jesus healing or something, whatever, and you'll, you'll find it. If you search, you will find, you know, God will lead you to it in the same way he led me to Stephen Bangar's video that I told you about in the beginning. And so, um, we can do the same today by saying 
unclean spirit leave right now in the name of Jesus. We only have to command the spirit to leave, command the pain to leave, the information to leave, whatever it is. We command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. And ye that have faith, you know, will you will see. When it comes to other matters in our life, um, so yeah, evil spirits, the same thing. You know, Jesus just commanded them to leave. So when it comes to other matters in our life, you know, like if it's about our job, our house, our children, no matter what, this is what Jesus said. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Uh, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever we ask in His name, He will do because He wants His Father to be glorified. And He says, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Jesus is not Santa Claus, huh? or some like to call him Satan Claus. He said that He will provide for all our needs and not necessarily our wants and our desires. So be careful what you ask for, because it's not about, you know, our desires and our whims, you know, sort of things. He will provide for all our needs. If you're missing money to pay your rent, He will provide. If you're missing a roof over your head, He will provide. If you need food on your table, He will provide. He will provide the basic necessities of what we need. So we never need to worry about that. We just need to ask and believe, and it will be there. In Matthew 7, 11, he says, If you then, being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to you who ask him? Right? So, God is good. He's a good, good Father. He would never, ever, 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 ever let us down. He has never let us down in the past. And I'm sure any of you look out there, look at your life, look back in the past, He has never, ever let you down. Because he, He's just... He just wants to save you, to bring you into his kingdom. So Jesus had faith. He wasn't a wishy-washy person in his prayers, nor were the apostles. We have to have that same faith. You know, there was a time before when I used to do Reiki and teach Reiki. And I, you know, I, I, I mean, that was the thing to do in the new age. You know, I wanted to serve people. I wanted to serve people so bad that, um, you know, when I came across this energy treatment, you know, and a Reiki thing, I took the courses because I wanted to help people be happy and to be healed and to be well. And when I read the New Testament for myself, I realized that this is wrong. He says, you know, I've given you this for free. Give it for free. And you realize that uh, when you're out there, you know, praying for people, and I've seen the healings myself, and you, you pray for them. You don't want money for that. You would never charge money for that because what God has given us, He's given to us freely. He paid the ultimate price by sacrificing His Son Jesus on the cross for us. And it says, by His stripes we are healed. So Jesus took all of our sickness on the cross with Him so we could be healed. All we have to do is stand in that promise and, and pray with, you know, uh, not pray, but ask with faith, command the, the sickness to be gone in faith. So we need to be walking in that, in that faith today. Jesus left us a great commission in Mark 16. And there's, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke. They all have something at the end where Jesus, when he left, he gave us a, a commandment. So the great command is not a recommendation. It's not if and when you feel like it. This is what it says. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say, go into all the world if you feel like it. Get off your couch if you feel like it. He says, no, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. That's important for those of you who do not believe yet. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And not baptized as a, as a baby. You know, he who repents later on in life is going to be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we have to ask with faith. We have to command the healing with faith. 
It just takes the faith of a mustard seed to move a mountain, is what Jesus said. So Jesus knew how things were going to go and how people were not going to have faith. I mean, he knew everything before uh, the earth was even created. You know, it says that in the Bible as well. And it was sadly, he says at one point, he says, when the Son of Man comes, which I believe is going to be soon enough, uh, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? It's so important. And, you know, I strongly believe that, uh, you know, we, we need to build our faith. If you are a Christian out there, you need to start building your faith because the day will come where you will have to choose between God and, and, and this world, with, between Jesus and your money. This is what he said to me. He says, the day will come, you'll have to choose between me and your money. So if I no longer have access to money and... Um, I will, that means I will no longer have access to many things like food. Uh, I will not be able to buy and sell. I will not be able to go to a doctor. I will not be able to get medication. So if I don't have access to all of that stuff, my faith needs to be pretty strong. And so I can, you know, pray for this healing, command, you know, any sickness to be healed. So it's very important for people, I believe, to build their faith right now, you know, while you still have access to certain things. So on another note, I want to talk about something else that I saw this week, and it's kind of on the same lines. I've seen different posts go by on social media these past weeks, praying for the COVID to go away in Jesus' name. And I wondered about that. Should we be praying for the COVID to go away? And, um, you know, maybe we should be praying for God to use this for his glory. Should we pray for life to go back to normal or should we pray for souls to be awakened? You know, it made me think of Brother Young in his book, you know, uh, called The Heavenly Man. He's a Chinese Christian. I've already talked to you about him. And he was tortured in prison in China for many years. And he said to his church at one point, he says, don't pray for me to get out of church, to, to get out of church. Don't pray for me to get out of prison. Pray for God's will to be done and for many souls to be one for the kingdom to repent. So, you know, it's not the words exact, but that's what he, he, he meant. Like, pray for the souls. And while he was in prison, he used that precious time to show the other prisons the, lover, the love of Christ. He showed them, you know, what it's like to, to have Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. And he brought many, many, many people to God's kingdom you know, in his time while he was in prison. So he never felt sorry for himself. He used that time. And then he goes on to say in his book too, he says, we never pray against our government. This is China. This is the communist, um, you know, political part of China. We never pray against our government or call down curses on them. Instead, we have learned that God is in control, both of our own lives and the government we live under. God has used China's government for his own purposes, molding and shaping his children as he sees fit. Instead of focusing our prayers against any political system, we pray that regardless of what happens to us, we will be pleasing to God. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? So we too, as believers, should be praying that God uses us for his glory. We should be praying that God uses everything, even the virus, to win souls. For his kingdom to bring in the harvest and to find the lost sheep and bring them home our sole purpose as christians as disciples as believers should be on winning souls for christ nothing else in this life should matter for us believers because we know what it is to come um, we know what it is to come we know the hour is near and it is the last call to all souls to repent and be baptized, to be born again in God's kingdom before it's too late. So, in closing, let us pray. Let us pray that God's will be done and that we will be pleasing to God. And, you know, if you haven't found Jesus yet, if you're not sure of everything that I say, don't believe a word I say. Go read it for yourself in the New Testament. If you don't have one, write me. I'll send you one. And... Um, and if you want to meet somebody maybe in your area that can pray for you or, you know, send me a message and I will hook you up with somebody. And if I can't find someone in your area, I will pray for you myself. So uh, don't be shy to reach out. You know, there's people all around the world right now working in God's kingdom that are available, that are committed to him full time. So, Father, 
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for making a way to you when there was no way, for sacrificing your son for our sins. So we who believe may have eternal life with you. Thank you for your love, your comfort, your mercy, your forgiveness, Lord. Father, we pray that you use this crisis in the world right now to wake people up. We pray that in their hardship that they would think to call on you for help, for you are our only hope, Lord Jesus. I pray that when they cry out to you to make a way for them, that they receive the revelation that, Jesus, you are the way. I pray that those who are searching for the truth right now find you, Lord Jesus, for you are the truth. I pray that those who are desperate, hopeless, and wanting to give up on life find you, Lord Jesus, because you are life. And with you, we can live through anything because you are our hope, our comfort, and our, and our salvation. Father, we pray that your kingdom come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Keep us safe from the evil one in these dark days ahead. Make us bold, give us courage, and strengthen us, Lord. Use us greatly for your kingdom so that we may be pleasing in your sight. Amen, amen, amen. I thank you for listening this morning. And uh, I just want to acknowledge Sharon that is listening this morning. And she says that our sister Elizabeth is the best example for God's healing. Well, maybe, yes, I should do a, a, a live or something with Elizabeth so she can share her story. There's so many people out there that have incredible testimonies about how God healed them. Myself, too, God healed me of colitis. He healed me uh, or delivered me from, from my addiction to cigarettes that I was smoking because of the colitis. And, uh, and even since I became a Christian, you know, it's not always necessarily because people wonder, like, what causes sickness? Well, it's the big word that nobody wants to hear about. In the Bible, it is clear that it's sin that causes sickness. Sin causes sickness. And, you know, Jesus took our sin upon the cross so we would be healed, right? And so when we give ourselves to him and we commit our lives to him, we um, repent from our sins and turn away from them, we stop sinning, we are healed by his stripes. We are healed when we are baptized, we are cleansed of our sins, and uh, we receive the Holy Spirit. And anyway, through all of that, we are healed. And if you are not healed, if you are a believer and you have been baptized, uh, reach out to me if you still have sickness in your life. If you still need to be delivered from something, reach out to me and I will help you find someone or, or actually pray for you myself, like I said, because we are meant to be, each and every one of us, healed and delivered and free. So, um, you know, you just, you just need to, to walk in that, in, in that truth. So, um, like I said, many people out there have been healed and delivered. And if you are searching for that as well, take a look on the internet, Google it, uh, go on YouTube. There's tons of testimonies. Or like I said, reach out to me and I will find something to show to you that that's what we are all meant to be. We're meant to be free in Jesus Christ. So with that, I wish you a wonderful week. God bless you all. And um, I love you. And I pray God's blessings over you and protection over you this week. And I'll see you again next week.